All right, guys, time to get down to it. Here we go with week two from the Every Bit Counts Challenge from 2022. I'm kind of excited to see this. I still have my book here ready to go for writing any notes. You uh, already have watched week one, so let's get started. Week two of the Every Bit Challenge has come and gone, and here's what we got up to. Once again, I'm delivering week two in what is almost the end of week three. So again, a theme, I'm always late. Week three, and I'm putting out week two in uh, 2022. Let's hope this year I can stay a little bit more on the ball with when these videos come out. But we did get a little bit more achieved, I think, in week two. Not that we didn't get a lot done in week one as well, but uh, it really wasn't pumping in the garden yet. And so we didn't see quite the results and we cheated a little bit. There was some stuff like, uh, well, you'll see in the video. But uh, all in all, pleased with the progress for week two and the prep work that's gone into what's an amazing week three. And I can say that already because, hey, I'm in the middle of week three filming this right now. So once again, Chris is hard at work getting things cut up. I'm always putting him to hard work. But uh, here we have our yellow pear tomatoes, which we grew from... Uh, our which we grew for our single seed challenge last year and just loved them. So one way we really, really enjoyed them was dehydrated. They made really wonderful tomatoes for on pizzas and things like that. So that's what we're hard at work with these ones as they're kind of coming off the vines. It's nice to just kind of put a little bit away here and there. Uh, the other thing that we're going to be popping into the dehydrator as well with these is some of our Alma paprika peppers. Uh, they're kind of all ripening at a little bit of a different pace, so we're not getting enough to do one big batch. So we're just going to kind of keep going with putting a little bit away each time we pick a few. And then um, we'll make a big batch of ground up paprika at the end. But stay tuned for how that works out. At this point in time in the garden this year, it seems really far away to have peppers and tomatoes ready. We're not looking at anything like that right now, but again, this video is technically three weeks from now, almost four. So I do think we'll have a few things ready to go, but I am I will admit I'm a little jealous of what was happening already for uh, August. Today we're working on some sauerkraut. We managed to pull those two cabbages that you saw in our garden tour out of the uh, garden the other day and chopped them all up. Here we go, nice and shredded. It was some good hand chopping. I need to get myself a sauerkraut chopper. Uh, but anyways, we've uh, weighed it and put in 2% salt. And now we're to the point we're just going to kind of press it and see if there's a bit of moisture starting to develop. But I'm not a sauerkraut expert. I did make it once before and it turned out wonderful. But it did not keep. It didn't last. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. But I've got my jars sterilized and my weights sterilized. So fingers crossed. This round of uh, sauerkraut is going to be fantastic. Fermenting is still something that I am far away from being a master at. That is for sure. Sauerkraut is a favorite, but one thing I find is we just don't eat it quickly enough and it always goes bad in the fridge. So it's definitely not on the agenda for this year at all. I do have cabbage out in the garden and if I do happen to get enough from that, I would like to try the canned coleslaw that so many people have told me about. So stay tuned to see if that does happen. But right now I've got some little like heads forming on my cabbage. So there might be some, plus we can use some of those greens because this year the bugs haven't been too bad so far in the garden. So one thing you're probably noticing so far in this video is there's very little canning. Uh, we are still probably about a week off from real canning season starting. The tomatoes are just starting to turn and that kind of is our main canning product, uh, whether it's going into stews or soups or anything like that. But one thing that we did get done this week, which is not of our own effort, but we did still raise this, is we butchered some sheep. We didn't, I shouldn't say that. We got some sheep butchered at our local butcher. And I just went and picked up that meat. So let me show you what we got. It's not anything fancy, but we did get three sheep butchered, which amounted to uh, basically about 160 pounds of mostly deboned meat. Um, that's how we tend to store this because it takes up a lot of room in the freezer. But that's where the problem is going to rise. So let's take a look in the freezer. 
Every time I come across these moments in old videos, I can't help but laugh and think, oh my gosh, because we are still dealing with the same problems over and over and over. Freezer space. And at this point in this video, we only had two freezers. Now we have four. One of them is not running at the moment because it's an outdoor freezer and we don't use it in the summer. But boy, it is tempting to move that sucker inside because it is getting really, really tight putting things in the freezer this year. Freezer A. We aren't doing too bad. We've got a little bit of space there, you can see. But really, we need to do a little bit of organizing because we do have a lot of meat to get in there. And freezer B is not much better. Freezer B. Full of frozen fruit, vegetables, our garlic butter, plus all of our chickens and a bunch of lamb that still needs to be eaten from last year. So let's see what we can do here. So what we have so far is 20 packages of stewing meat and 12 legros because we got them halved so uh four per sheep but that's already taken up a huge chunk of this freezer so now we're going to get in the loin chops and ground and see what we're left with all right we got it all in and the freezer lids closed now i will say there is no room for anything else so we are going to have to get to work blitzing that out but what i've taken out here is five bags of tomatoes from last year each bag is six pounds, so we have 30 pounds to work with. So I'm hoping to do some paste and some pizza sauce. So the decision is made. We're going to make uh, tomato paste with the tomatoes that we removed from the freezer. Now, as you'll recall, I think it was 30 pounds of tomatoes that I uh, defrosted. And one of the wonderful things about using uh, frozen tomatoes for paste is that you can remove so, 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 so much of the excess liquid before you even run it through the food mill. And it saves that step of having to kind of boil them in order to get them through the food mill, in order to get the skins off and all that. I'll show you here in one sec. To be honest, freezing tomatoes has become my go-to, which again causes concern this year with how much space there isn't in the freezer. It just makes it so much easier for so many of those curry sauces, pasta sauces, all the things that just you need cook down time. It saves so much effort and time and work, especially in August when the heat is high and you really don't want to be cooking something off in the house. That is certainly something that we will still be doing in August this year. I have a feeling it is going to be later in August as well because the tomatoes are just not there yet. But I did see some on the vine today, so I'm super excited about that. So there's one of those six pound bags from the freezer. And uh, what happens is I always get holes in them or whatever. So they drain a little bit as they're defrosting. And then I just open a corner and tip. And as you can see, most of the liquid is gone out of these tomatoes. Uh, and I would say it's probably gone down by two thirds. So this just kind of saves an extra step. I mean, instead of having to boil these down for three hours or so, it will take a lot less time. But we're gonna get busy running these through the food mill so that we can get some paste made. So we are to the point where we're almost ready to can this tomato paste. Now, as I was saying in, uh, earlier in the video, it was really nice to have this uh, tomatoes from the freezer because that probably thirded, thirded, is that a word? My uh, cook time on this. This has been going for a little over two hours and we'll show you in a second here just how thick this is. But basically, there you can see, it's starting, it's not mounding yet on the spoon. We still got probably another hour or so, but we're to that point that it's gone down again by close to half. Uh, so we're going to add the remaining ingredients that are needed for this. Basically, you need two, I should, I'll write the recipe for a single batch in the bottom. As you know, I did double, but so two teaspoons is what I need of pickling salt. You can also just use a coarse sea salt. It needs to be non-iodized. And then you need to still add citric acid, even though it is kind of thought of that tomatoes don't need this, you still need to add it, especially with a paste tomato. So we're going to put two teaspoons and I all always go a little bit more just for good measure I want this to keep right so now we're just gonna stir that in and the reason I don't put the uh, lemon juice in the jars is because as this gets thicker and thicker it really gets harder for that lemon juice to get all spread amongst the tomatoes if you just put them in the jars so that's why we do it right in here in this simmering stage so there we have everything in the pot we're going to let this cook for another probably 45 minutes, maybe an hour, we'll see. 
Um, and then we're going to jar it up and can this. Uh, you need to do a water bath afterwards for 45 minutes for half pint jars. Um, so we'll bring you back and uh, show you just how much we got out of this double batch of tomato paste. So there you can see we ended up with nine jars of the paste from that double batch. As you can see, that is some thick stuff in there. It doesn't even like fall forward. Super, super pleased with this tomato paste this time around. That will come in very handy later on this season when I'm doing some sauces and stuff and just want to throw a jar of paste in there or a stew, that kind of thing. But that's one more thing in the pantry. So today we are dehydrating some yarrow to uh, break into uh, or blend up into a powder. Yarrow is excellent for medicinal purposes and we happen to have a yard full of it. So this year we figured why not? We should really be putting some of this stuff away. So although it's not necessarily food, you can use it in teas and things like that. But uh, still something great to be putting away in this Every Bit Counts Challenge. It's funny watching this because I just said to Chris this morning, the yarrow is all blossoming in the yard again. And I just said we should probably go out and harvest some and dehydrate it or uh, freeze it to uh, make some compresses, things like that. So uh, definitely a lot of forageable medicinal type herbs are all around the yard right now and they're all in their peak. So dehydrating is huge. We are already in the throes of it and uh, I'm sure you're going to see it quite a bit in this year's Every Bit Counts Challenge as well. As you saw, we were dehydrating some yarrow. Now, we are very fortunate uh, to have moved to a property that is absolutely covered in yarrow, and in all honesty, in the three years that we've now been here almost, we've not used it, certainly not to its potential anyways. So we're now just discovering uses for it and how to use it, but so, so far what I've managed to dehydrate there is basically a little under a cup once I broke it up. Now you can use your yarrow just like this. You can save this over the winter and make teas, which you could then use uh, for uh, poultices and things like that um, when you need it. You can use it fresh over the summer, but we're kind of looking more towards what we need for in winter time. But we're going to try actually a little experiment and we're going to take this one cup and pulverize it in our uh, food processor to try and make a powder. Because from what I understand, Yarrow, it helps to stop bleeding. All you would take is this powder and dab it on a wound or a cut. Now, obviously, I mean, if you've got a gaping thing that needs stitches, it's not going to exactly help with that. But we're going to see if my little chopper here can pulverize this into a bit of a powder. And then we're going to basically dehydrate a whole bunch more and see if we can fill this jar. So that's kind of what we got out of the one cup we got. I don't know, maybe an eighth of a cup, quarter of a cup, a couple tablespoons anyways. It's interesting at this moment here, I notice my shaking in the uh, camera as I'm holding up that jar. And now I look back at some of the very obvious signs of the diabetes that I didn't really maybe want to see. Um, but that's interesting because since I have changed my diet, I have noticed the shaking is so much less, especially with filming. The filming is something where that shaking really showed, especially like when you were holding the camera up, facing yourself or trying to do selfie shoots, shoots, shots, video, <laughs> whatever. Um, it's interesting to see it two years ago, back in 2022, and the fact that I was still ignoring that. Uh, so it's a start, proves that it works. I will say our food processor is not fantastic for this. But what it didn't work up, we're going to save for tea. So we're going to collect up that as well because it still has some really fantastic healing properties. But all in all, I'm quite pleased that we're taking some initiative and in actually using it this year. So, uh, well, we're not using it yet, but we're at least preserving it. So that's uh, a wrap on that one for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. I am not going to hold my breath that we're going to get this full by the end of it, but we're sure going to try. Today on the homestead, we are working on dehydrating some more parsley. Uh, this is a great thing to do overnight, as you can uh, tell, it's getting dark. Uh, but I know we did this last week, but this is something that we make a lot of throughout the season. And this is a great thing to have on the pantry shelf over the winter. So, last time, that's how much we dehydrated. It'd be nice to fill this jar. So, we are back at it. So, as we approach the end of week two on the Every Bit Counts Challenge, uh, one thing that we are finding is we're doing a lot of prep work. 
uh, that seems to be the case at the beginning of August because things are just starting to roll and we're not really there yet to go into those full-on projects, but prep work is always great. And I'm going to show you a few things that we're doing here to make our lemony basil soup later. So one thing that we are finding right now is our uh, San Marzano tomatoes. We're getting some little guys right off the bat, but we don't have enough for our recipe. So what I'm doing here is I am just slicing them and freezing. We actually have a video on this, which I will link above, but essentially I'm just cutting the tops and putting a little X into the bottoms and putting it into the bag. I am cutting up some of the bigger tomatoes that I'm using, but Essentially, one of these bags holds six pounds, and conveniently, my recipe is 10 to 12 pounds of Roma tomatoes. So, this works out perfect, and I can put this bag into the freezer, and what happens is when I unthaw this, all that excess moisture is kind of gone, and I can use it and get a thicker consistency, make things how I want. The skin falls off. It's a wonderful thing. Give it a try. But we're going to get this bag filled. And at the same time, in prep for making lemony basil soup later, we've harvested some basil from the garden because right now the basil is fantastic. So I need, I need two cups of basil for the recipe that I want to make. So I'm freezing these in kind of a little bit over two cup portions because, hey, who doesn't like a lot more flavor? But we're just going to put that into the freezer as is because we know we're going to be taking this out in the next month or so. <laughs> That basil's still in my freezer. <laughs> when it came time to actually do these, I still had basil out in the garden and I harvested fresh again. So those two containers with the blue lids are still sitting in my freezer waiting to be used. They're probably quite freezer burnt at this point and should just kind of be compost and we start over again. But it is quite funny to see this now and go, wow, it's been two years that those have been in the fridge. <laughs> and getting everything all made up and canned. So again, straight from the garden, prep work, but is still essential for getting us through uh, harvest season and having a lot of food for winter storage. So rather than bore you with the details every week, I'm gonna end week two with a plan. My hope is by the end of the Everything Counts Challenge to have all these jars filled up. Now what we have there, you can see, these are one liter jars of oregano, parsley and basil, and then we have our yellow pear shaped tomatoes and paprika peppers. So I'm about to start again, dehydrating another round of these wonderful yellow lemon pear tomatoes. But you can see we're sure running short on the basil. So I've got to get going on that a little bit more, but we'll see how I do at the end of this challenge. So that's a wrap of uh, week two of 2022. I love what I did at the end there was showing all the jars of the dehydrated stuff. I think I'm gonna do that again for uh, 2024. I'm going to start at the beginning showing you the jars, where we're at, and what we end up with at the end would be wonderful because uh, we did find that on a lot of those items, we actually use more than that one quart jar of spices. So there's a lot of things that we are bringing in and dehydrating and I think that layout of showing them all is fantastic. One thing that I really need to do is clean my spice shelf because I have no idea what's on there or what we're eating from. So maybe we should do that journey together because it's going to be quite the challenge. But anyways, it is time to move on to week two of 2023. So stay tuned for that.